you fix it. And I'm going to tell you a story about what happened to me because I've made mistakes too. And all these people would have had it done is make it right. And I'm going to explain to you why. Okay. So struggle Jennings and jelly roll, they both pieces of shit for taking advantage of, you know, mistaking my kindness for weakness. Um, but I'm going to tell you a story about me messing something up. Just like those people mess something up of mine. I messed something up of old farmers. I tore the shit out of his field when I was a kid. Okay. I was probably like 16, 15 or 16, just had my license or whatever. And I was down off in the cut. We was out in the country. We was hunting down at the family farm and stuff like this. And a buddy of mine decided he was going to get a bottle of liquor. And we got a bottle of liquor. And we slamming Southern Comfort. We're driving around on the farm. We ain't on public roads. You know, we're not hurting nobody. We're not messing anything up. We're out in the field. We're cutting up. We're, we're, we're having a good time, right? Well, some dumbass reason, you know, the Southern Comfort or whatever was getting to me. And I decided I want to pull across the way there into this other field right here but we didn't own that field and i got down in this field and i started ripping and roaring i mean hell i was i was drunker than a damn skunk <clears throat> and i'm ripping and roaring in this farm field closed course no public roads nothing whatever and i'm just cutting these donuts cutting these donuts we're laughing like hyenas hell we don't even know what the hell we're doing we're just bored bored as hell we've done hunted for days and we're in the middle of nowhere hours from anything at the family farm well, I dipped over in the old farmer hall's property and and got stuck. It took me a minute to get up out of that shit. And I seen a car or two come down the old tar road. I seen a car or two see me off stuck and trying to get up out of this field. Didn't think much of it till a day or two after I'd done split town. Next day I split town. I don't know who the hell's field I was stuck in or whatever. I didn't even know what really what the hell we was doing. We was just having a good time, cranking the music, carrying on, cutting donuts, right? right carrying on that's what that's what young bucks do the out in the middle of nowhere you make your own fun well i shouldn't have made my own fun in the middle of this old farmer's uh field right and when i left up out of town i drove about two hours away only for me to get a voicemail that to this day i still have on my phone in my voicemail and one day i'm gonna put it in a song because this guy he ain't no longer here so he can't get mad about me putting his voice in the song but I got a, I've got a voicemail, dead ass, on my phone from this old farmer who's now years since passed away. But to land the plane, this is what happened. I get this voicemail and it says, "Now look at here, this is uh, Mr. Hall from uh, down there, in Cross, Virginia, and uh, I understand the way I have it is that you've, uh, uh, you the man that cut the donuts in my field." And so what I'm going to tell you is, is you're going to either come down here and fix this field or I'm going to prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law. And so we're going to do it however you want to do it, Mr. Lawhorn. Uh, and you just uh, you just let me know. And that's that's pretty much the voicemail right there. So I heard that on my fresh cell phone. I just got this fancy cell phone when I was 16 years old. I just couldn't believe it. I got the one of the ones that flipped up and whatever. And here on my cell phone, I got a voicemail from this old farmer. Holy shit, I didn't even know he knew how to leave a message. He done found me. Somebody done seen my ass stuck in the field and told his ass. And somebody put two and two together and freaking pinned it. Told It was me. They found out it was me. We're living in the middle of nowhere, dude. These people, everybody knows everybody. So so I'm caught red-handed. I tore the donuts in the man's field. I'm 16-year-old kid. Shit. So I told my daddy, I said, Dad, I messed up. I said, I done cut some donuts in this old farmer's field. He's been called up, left a voicemail on my phone. He says he's going to prosecute me to the fullest extent of the law if I don't come down there and fix it. He said, well, you going to go down there and fix it then, ain't you? And I said, yes, sir, I'm going to go down there and fix it. So I drove two hours back down there to the family farm, went across the way there to that field I'd gotten over in there. And there was a man, an old farmer, sitting on a sitting on a five-gallon bucket. All right. I pulled up there. He, I come over there, and I, I talk, he looked at me. He didn't say nothing. I just I walked over there, and I, I said, Sir, I just want to go ahead. Before I make this right, I want to go ahead and let you know that I'm sorry. And I, and I wasn't thinking would have done it. And I said, uh, I said, I'm going to do whatever I need to to make it right. And he looked at me and he said, son, 
We've all been young. We've all made mistakes. He said, what matters is, is, is that you showed up to make it right. And he said, you're going to make it right. <laughs> and that son of a bitch sat on a five-gallon bucket while I took a rake and raked this man's soybean field all the way over until you could not see one damn mark on that field. And when the man was satisfied, after I'd been out there raking away and sweating my nuts off for about two hours or whatever, I looked up at him like, is this good? And he, he stood up off of his five-gallon bucket and he said, it's like nothing ever happened. And I walked over to him and I said, sir, I'm so sorry again. I'm so sorry to take the time out of your day. You got to sit here and watch me make sure I made it right and everything. I, I'm really sorry. He said, son, don't be sorry. I was your age once. Again, what matters is that you showed up to make it right. And you know what the crazy thing was is that the day after I cut them donuts in that field and I went up to the local country store, Somebody said, I forgot this. Somebody said, some kin of mine. He said, I heard you uh, had a good time last night down there in old boys down there across the way there. I said, oh, yeah, you heard about that. That was about the time I split town, tried to get away from it. But like I says, just as soon as everybody had knew when I did it, when I went down there and I made it right, everybody knew that I made it right. The next time I went down to that country store, they were like, hey, think a lot of you, son. You know, it takes a lot. It takes a big man to go down there and make something, you know, make a mistake and, and to go down there and man up and look at old farmer, 80 some year old farmer, hard as nails, freaking survived more shit than you'll ever wrap your mind around to look that man in the face and apologize, mean it and then do something to make it better. That's what separates the men from the boys. And that day right there, I gained a piece of my manhood for, you know, for doing the right thing. And so to those guys to land the plane, could they make it right with me? Sure. One of these days, maybe they will. I hope they do because I, I like I like Struggle Jennings a lot. Never really been a fan of Jelly Roll. I don't like his music. Don't like him as a person still. Uh, but, but anyways, man, it's just, it's a sad thing. It's like nowadays we're living in a world where there's these people out here that want to paint themselves like men of principles, but yet you ain't really a man of principle if you can't make some shit that you messed up right. So at the end of the day, ain't nobody looking for me and I'm, I ain't hiding from nobody and ain't nobody hiding from me. And that's the way I like to be. You know what I'm saying? I don't got to run. I don't got to hide. I don't got nothing. People know about me. You know, all the people that know anybody at all that are connected to anything in this country music shit, they know about me. They might whisper and not talk in person or might not say, but whatever. Some of them actually might have the nuts to say I'm crazy or we know this guy, he did this. That You chased a possum behind Justin Moore's tour bus and jumped off the stage in front of 10,000 people and you know, crowd surfed across the way there and, you know, uh, made it out of every dive bar that was for real. I mean, when you play shit called the Grand Wizard Saloon, you know what I'm saying? You go, how the hell did we get booked here? We're going to fire the booking agent, but damn, we still got to play. And it's a whole damn bar full of one percenters and people that would just eat your breakfast. Guys sitting there blowing speed up her nose or something like this. You could look like they going to come out of a damn drug fuel craze and beat your ass with a cue stick. Son, I seen I seen old boys sit there and put cigarettes out on their arm in front of me and then stick their finger up in my face like that boy right there. I'm talking about I'm talking about pull my guitar off and, and about crack somebody in the head. You know what I mean? You ain't got no idea. I used to wear a chain around my guitar. I got a strap that I used to wear around my electric guitar. And uh people was like, damn that's a fake chain, and I'd pick it up off of my guitar and drop it on the stage, and the shit sounded like a sack of bricks, you know, because it was a real chain, like pull a truck with it, you know, 4,000, 5,000 pound, whatever, you know, real shit, because there was times where I had to take that shit off and be like, oh, yeah, you really want to try and wreck me, you and your three friends? Well, guess what? Well, you and your three friends 
you you you're gonna be the first one to get it out of the and then then I'm gonna get them other two because when I come across your thigh with that with that freaking toe and chain strap, yeah, we gonna see you ain't Billy Badass no more. You gonna leave the guy with the long hair alone that you thought you could mess with. You thought I was a boy named Sue, but I ain't named Sue. I'm going to bust out the pull cue, I'm going to bust out the chain, and I'm going to whoop your ass up and down the block, and we're going to send you packing on back down there to mama, and I'm going to make it out the club alive with about 10 grand in my pocket and go on back to the next place. And see, that's what that's what your boy came up on. None of these country music singers that are playing these big venues and these clubs or these uh, uh festivals and these big arenas and shit like that, most of them didn't come up grinding it out in the little honky tonk in middle of nowhere west virginia or the damn grand wizard saloon or what the hell I, you snorty horse or something like this damn middle of nowhere that's where i come up do you think the people look like me in the middle of nowhere hell no you think that people wanted to try me and try to pull my card you think that people try to freaking get me all the time hell yeah they did yeah because they would have loved it the world star the dude with the busted uh with the busted cowboy hat and the the pigtail braids. Oh yeah, you a girl, you a blah blah shit. I've heard it all, but I tell you what, they them and their boys, they try to jump on me. I rip that antenna off their car and say, which one of you wants it first, you sons of bitches? Watch this. Wapow. And see, that's 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 the thing. That's the untold truth of the JJ Lawhorn is that everybody wanted to see me fail where I came from. A lot of people thought that they was just gonna just gonna world star my ass and send me packing but they couldn't they tried it wasn't a challenge i didn't want no smoke with nobody but as soon as they started we, we just gonna go ahead and tell you the rest of the story you 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 reached out and swung and you you two boys came in there and i heated rush and we just i broke your thigh uh and and you laying underneath the truck now right 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 yeah, there ain't no rules in fighting, ain't no rules and and that kind of shit. And I grew up gritty, man. I seen more people get their face displaced. I seen more people get shot, shot at, stabbed. I've been stabbed twice. I don't say that shit to be some hard ass. I'm telling you right now, lived a gritty life, man. When I was 13, 14 years old, I could walk seven, eight, nine, ten miles in any direction and go wherever I wanted. It was the only thing I feared was mama whooping my ass if I did not come back on time for dinner. If I got all my shit done, if I got all my chores done, I got done working on a farm, what was I doing? I was walk walking six, seven, eight, nine miles off in the cut, boy. I'm wading in the water down there. I got my toes down in the water. Freaking, there goes a two-foot-long bowfin with... Freaking teeth like piranhas. Them some bitches see something like that with sitting there with his mouth open in the shallow water. They ain't never getting back in that damn creek. It might as well be an alligator. That's what I did every day, man. I bailed hay. I worked for the old farmers. And then when I got done working for them and I got done working for my mom and my daddy and doing work on the farm, what I'd do? I went off in the cut, boy. I'd have got my shit from out the mud. I'd have got the experience, the life experience, the the woodsmanship experience from doing it, from really growing up like that. You you show me where there's a place where a kid can go walk seven miles and not have to worry about some pedophile abducting their ass or something like this. Shit's getting rarer and rarer nowadays. There's all kinds of crazy people out there in the world. There's all kinds of crazy shit going on. It's it's it's, it's just a different world than when I was growing up you know it's a different world than 15 years ago it's a different world than 10 years ago different world than 25 years ago but i say all this shit to say man is that at the end of the day it ain't dead yet them some bitches would like to have you believe that country music really is dead but as long as i'm alive it ain't dead. And there's going to be people on here that bitch piss them on and say, J.J. Lawhorn don't make real country music. Show me somebody who makes country music that actually lives a country lifestyle and sings the shit that they're living. Show me one of them. Show me one of them. Show me one of them that live without running water. Show me one of them that lived on the side of a mountain. You know what I'm saying? Show me, show me one of them really living a real country life. I know all the guys that are really country that are left, and most of them ain't even relevant anymore. You know, you got guys like Gary Allen and shit like this. He done put out an album, sell 2,000 copies. Gary Allen's a damn legend, and nobody gives a shit. They just want to tune into TikTok and see who's hitting that dance and going viral on this bitch, and they care more about, the record label cares more about who's going viral on the damn TikTok 
than they do about who's a country music legend that's making good music. They ain't pushing good music. They're pushing bullshit. They're pushing shit that they can brainwash your ass with into thinking, hey, this ain't this is country music. Yeah, this is good. It sounds like pop music. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a fan of country, but I, I kind of like this shit here. Yeah. No. You don't put the radio station on, the hip-hop station, and hear polka and go, damn, damn it, man. Oh, uh, yeah, this is hip hop. No, you go shit. What happened? What they got accordions and people going oh, yeah, oh, 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 on there? What the hell? This ain't hip hop station. What happened to ninety five point two or whatever? You would freak out. You would flip out if you heard another genre being played on a another genre station. But that's exactly what they're doing with country music, man. So support people that are artists that are trying to make good substance, wholesome. Shit that people can relate to, believe in, shit that affects people in a positive way. Support these people, man. Protect these people, man. You don't gotta protect me, but support me if you if you are so kind. Help me put some shoes on my baby's feet. You know what I'm saying? Uh support me. You ain't gotta protect me. But the rest of these some bitches protect them. Cause if they are a country and they're you know still around, they gonna get hit hard. I'm just good at staying out of the way. I know how to, to to slip off in the hills and and disappear if I need to. The mother some bitches they ain't really got the they ain't got the means to protect themselves. So protect them some bitches. You know what I'm saying? Pray for me, protect them, support me if you will. But just know, until I die, country music ain't dead. They might have killed the tree that is country music, but they can't stop the acorns that fallen off that some bitch already. It's already sprouting up new growth, sprouting up new new life, man. And it, and it happens every time I put out a song. Come on. Tell me about that shit. Mm-hmm. That's the truth.